Cut! All right, all right, let's try this again. So I set out to make a moving short film about British citizens during the stringent rationing of World War II. I have no artistic or cinemagraphic training whatsoever, but I figured it couldn't be that hard to sketch some characters based on period photos and render them into motion. I mean, there must be an app for that. Well, there's not. And as it turns out, hand-drawing every frame of a five-minute animation takes significantly longer than the three days I'd allotted for my project. I put some vintage filters on stock videos I found online, but it turns out that searching for open domain clips and photos of exactly what I was envisioning is almost as time-consuming as channeling my inner Pixar employee. So we'll just have to do this the old-fashioned way instead. Uh, can I get some Ken Burns, though? That's better. So it turns out that the rationing imposed by the British government in the 1940s was way more intense than what was experienced in the US, and remained in place for almost 15 years. England's small size made it difficult for it to grow its own food, and by the 1930s, over two-thirds of its food was imported, including 80% of its fruit and wheat and 50% of its protein. The Germans were kind of poop heads, and they took full advantage of the situation by sending masses of U-boats out to prevent cargo ships from reaching British shores. Whatever was produced was prioritized for the military, especially meat. Much like the Victory Garden movement in the US, the government encouraged its citizens to grow as much food on the home front as possible. Available public and private land was turned into allotments to be cultivated by communities, including parks, lawns, zoos, playing fields, even bomb sites. Even the moat surrounding the Tower of London was used to grow food. However, nutrients for the masses were still difficult to come by. Clever Brits turned to foraging wild foods to obtain crucial vitamins. Black currants were turned into vitamin C rich syrup. Chicory root could be substituted for coffee. Chestnuts, walnuts, and hazelnuts provided a source of much needed protein. Elderberry flowers could be made into wine. Sorrel, dandelion, nasturtium, nettles, certain succulents, and mushrooms were all prized for their nutrients and flavors. The warriors were grim, and rationing continued in Britain until 1954. But thanks to the efforts of people like Grandma, the British Islanders persevered through the lean times. Someday I'll return to the story of Grandma and the little girl, but for now, I hope you've learned something about British rationing and what it took to survive. In an uncertain world, a little botanical knowledge can be a lifesaver.